everybody, and a warm welcome to the Ericsson and Telenor Connection Meetup event here in the studio in Stockholm. To our first speaker of the day, we have Yuan Harvard. Welcome. My role is to coordinate everything related to the digitization of industry. What we're seeing now is really a new paradigm of opportunities. We're seeing small implementation steps where you take bits and pieces of these new opportunities and plug them into your business. But more major steps where you really use this technology in larger bits of your company, uh, improving your operations as a whole, interaction with, with suppliers, etc., that is still very difficult. But that is also the opportunity. Because if it was more easy, some, someone would, would have done it already. I'm responsible for advanced industries at Ericsson. And that is where we're focusing on industrial sites. It can be a factory, it can be a mine, an oil refinery. But we see that really that is where 5G start to take off first. Your shop floor cannot be designed as it was in the past with assembly lines. Now you have to be, have mobility and move things around in real time. And that is the excitement with Industry 4.0 when the OT players, the IT players, and us then coming from communication is merging into one new ecosystem. $1.8 trillion, the IoT uh, industry, our business is going to be worth by 2026. Uh, we're seeing a tremendous growth coming from China, and that is going to be the biggest market in the next couple of years. And it, it, it's absolutely incredible what's happening in China, and we're going to see that hopefully spread into the rest of the world soon. I'm going to talk about connected products as a service. And this is uh, something that we see as a very strong trend these days. Uh, I think uh, all of you recognize the difference between selling a product as a box shifting, uh, maybe adding a service on top, that could be a support agreement, it could be uh, integration services or operational services and such things. I think um, depending on which vertical you are uh, in, you've been more or less exposed to these type of business models. But if you combine these two, you could actually get even products as a service where you disconnect from box shifting, you sell uh, services with a recurring revenue. And, and some industries have been better at uh, implementing this as an early stage. I think the IT and software industry were quite early out, uh, where you, with a license-based model, got access to a functionality that were updated over time, and you always got the latest version, uh, as long as you paid for the service. And um, this is something that I'm going to focus a little bit about, because we see this now happening in a lot of different other verticals as well. I see that we connect different verticals. We, we go beyond our home zone, so to say, and, and interact with other players, like we hope that we can do here today. But when you start to sell your, your products as a service, uh, where you can maybe reach out to completely new customer segments, because there are no upfront investments needed, uh, so you, you can reach out to the larger customer base, where you can maybe understand over time where your customer is moving. I mean, the, the thing that you once bought may be obsolete after a while, but you can continue to evolve that if you know enough about your customer and, and have a continuous relationship with, with that customer. Uh, so it becomes stickier. Uh, and uh, maybe focusing in a little bit more on that, why, ben why enterprises do this and what they benefit from. I think uh, one part is the actual offering. Um, if you have that type of service-based uh, relationship with your customer, you probably know more about what the customer actually wants and what the customer wants over time, which could be changing a thing. So optimizing the, the uh, products and the services compared to the needs, but which are here and now, and which is, of course, in a, in, a, in a business like ourselves, the telecom business, which is changing so fast, that is required. What is sold at one point in time will be obsolete quite quickly because it's evolving so fast with all the technology. Um, and you can maybe differentiate your, your, your uh, products and services through the same means. In 2015, uh, I got the task to do something in the cloud. It was a bit vague. And uh, we, we had some issues at the time with connecting these pump stations. We had uh, a large installed base. We are the largest player within wastewater. Uh, we have about 2 million pumps in operation, but we don't know where they are. Uh, and uh, we have a small part connected 
of those, but normally to the customer system, to some of our sales company system, but not visible for us. So we started uh, trying to scope this project. Uh, and uh, we had a lot of workshops. We talked with all the, our internal experts. And uh, after a while, we found out that no one really understood what we were talking about. We had the PowerPoints, but they didn't really understand. So we, we said that, OK, we have to build something that's real. So we have to show what it is. So we say, we build something really thin, but we build it end to end. So it's not, and it should be for real, not a demo or a mock up or something like that. It should be able to use. So this was kind of very much more business development than technology. So uh, we said that we should sell a service only, not hardware. We used to sell SIM cards or modems and so, but we should sell this as a package, as a solution. And we had a, a, a very good piece that we got from, from Telenor. Uh, that's the device here. It's a, it's a small modem or a cloud modem. It's like 10 times 10 times uh, 3 centimeters or so. And that, that box, it, that's a full 2G and full 3G modem with a built-in SIM card and a global, global data subscription uh, with roaming. So we can use that box and replace all of these local solutions. And that decreased complexity a lot. We had this, the pump station or electric cabinet in that side. We had uh, the Telenor device. That was very important. That was always bundled with the Telenor cloud. You could not use it for other operators. We simplified a lot. And then we used part of the platform from Telenor. And also from our internal, we built, we're building a framework that we call xCloud. Uh, and then we had an application that we call silent monitoring. And what it gives is for the customer, it's a kind of peace of mind that my equipment is working. I don't have to worry. And this is, is it's, it's a bit complex to build a total solution, but uh, it, that is only part of the chain, because this is a one, we build it once. But over time, it's much more complex when you actually operate a solution like this. We have ongoing platform changes in this. And, and for our customers, you can't miss an alarm, because if you miss an alarm, you're out. So th that's extremely important this is, because this is critical infrastructure and you, you can't miss something here. Basically, how I see it is that I'm looking for the next generation of connectivity that can provide the digital infrastructure to enable industrial IoT. What I've been talking here about here on the industrial product side is SKF manufacturing machines. And we have used them all different sorts of devices um, to connect to the Ericsson private LTE. We then used Ericsson's IoT platform um, and the distributed cloud to do analytics. And then we used the SKF mobile operator support tool application as a graphical user interface to the operators. Now, as I explained, only only replacing the, the, the current situation or the current shop floor lawn with a cellular one shows a huge promise uh, of cost reduction. And then I haven't even started to quantify the value of actually providing data-driven decision support on a large scale. We will start small and then do only a mini Waba product. But also we do a mini Waba business model because we would like to understand than how we can scale up later. So Ericsson Garage is really how we are structuring and focusing on the first two, two and a half phases of innovation within Ericsson. How you can do the ideation together with you, understand the pain point, structure it properly. And then after that, how we do an incubation. Let's move, as it was said before. Let's start to do something cross boundaries, cross industries. To me personally, this is really important to emphasize the value of the cloud platforms that come in play now. I mean, we have been working with IoT ourselves for so long, so we've seen our customers building up their own IT systems and everything like that in, in the old-fashioned way. But what's happening now is that the thresholds to integrate into different uh, uh, applications is so much lower, so much easier to actually realize these cross-vertical uh, solutions that we, we're really looking for. Um, and then, not the least, I mean, the, the applications and the actual customer value, I think, 
as I said before, that's where we need to start. Why are we doing this? Of course, to create customer value. So then it's just backtrack from there. Yeah. So. Very well said, Martin. I think it's also really fun to be here side by side. We have a lot of business that we do together. And we want to invite all of you guys to work side by side with Telenor Connection and Ericsson to really enable this journey. Mm -hmm.